An American strategic bomber called the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider is currently being developed for the U.S. Air Force. It will be a long-range, stealth intercontinental strategic bomber for the U.S. Air Force that can deliver both conventional and nuclear missiles as part of the long-range strike bomber program. What is the speciality of this bomber? How is it better than the ones we already have? Let's check out the future of the U.S. aerial warfare. The B-21 Raider, the newest bomber from the Defense Department, was unveiled at Palmdale, California on December 22, 2022. The B-21 was presented at the Northrop Grumman Aircraft Factory amid dramatic music and lighting displays. According to Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III, the Air Force's B-21 will be the cornerstone of America's bomber force as the country's first strategic bomber in more than three decades. He said, it's a testament to America's enduring advantages in ingenuity and innovation, and it's proof of the department's long-term commitment to building advanced capabilities that will fortify America's ability to deter aggression, today and into the future. The Secretary stated that the Defense Department and he are dedicated to sustaining this type of collaboration with the defense industrial base in order to guarantee that the best technology that America has to offer will be accessible to support the defense of the country. The Air Force received the contract for engineering and production development in 2015, which marked the start of the B-21 Raiders development. The Air Force has stated it seeks an inventory of a minimum of 100 B-21 bombers. The B-21 Raider is anticipated to be a part of a wider family of systems for conventional long-range strikes, encompassing intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, electronic attack, communication, and other capabilities. It can conduct nuclear activities, and is made to support manned or unmanned operations. It will also be able to use a variety of direct attack and standoff weapons. Since the B-2 a Spirit's introduction in 1988, the B-21 Raider is the Air Force's first brand new bomber. The B-21, named after Doolittle's Raiders, a group of B-25 Mitchell bombers that bombed Tokyo in the spring of 1942, is built to defeat contemporary air defense threats such as those posed by the Chinese J-20 stealth fighter and Russian S-400 surface-to-air missile system. The B-21 will be able to transport nuclear bombs, as well as normal missions with precise guidance. The B-21 will have flying wings, which Northrop Grumman has specialized in since the conclusion of World War II. It is commonly believed that the merging of the fuselage and wing, along with the absence of horizontal and vertical stabilizers in the rear, Make this form the ideal one for dodging enemy radars from all angles. Radar waves are likely to bounce off of a bomber when it penetrates further into hostile territory, necessitating all-around stealth. According to Austin, it will be able to support joint and coalition forces over the full range of operations and is made to be adaptable to changing threat environments. The radar was built with open system architecture, which makes it highly adaptable, Austin said. As the United States continues to innovate, this bomber will be able to defend our country with new weapons that haven't even been invented yet. And the B-21 is multifunctional. It can handle anything from battle management to integrating with our allies and partners. And it will work seamlessly across domains and theaters and the joint force. What are the specifications and the cost of the B-21 bomber? The B-21's real capabilities and specifications are poorly understood because almost every aspect of the program is classified. Even the precise wingspan of the aircraft is unknown, but based on the size of the B-21's landing gear as visible during the unveiling, it seems to be smaller than the B-2 Spirit, which had a wingspan of 172 feet. There were no rear views of the aircraft revealed to the public. Only the front of the aircraft was displayed at the unveiling ceremony. This means we know very little about the exhaust of its engines, which would give clues to its propulsion system and subsequently its flight capabilities. It also means that we don't even know what the full silhouette or platform of the B-21 looks like. The lack of seams on the aircraft displayed during the unveiling ceremony may indicate that the B-21's production utilized advanced manufacturing processes and cutting-edge materials that enable sensors, communication antennae, and air data systems to be integrated directly into the airframe. This would entail a radical shift in the aircraft's low observability making it even more difficult to find it using radar and other sensors. But the aircraft is said to be able to travel at a subsonic speed of an average of 563 miles per hour. While both Northrop Grumman and the Air Force have released fact sheets on the stealthy new jet, 
they are limited to broad generalities about the aircraft's capabilities. The manufacturer's fact sheet reads that developed with the next generation of stealth technology, advanced networking capabilities, and an open systems architecture, the B-21 is optimized for the high-end threat environment. The aircraft was designed with what is known as an open systems architecture, meaning it can be quickly upgraded with new capabilities and subsystems as they develop. The APUC or the average unit procurement cost of one bomber was set at a whopping $692 million. APUC is the total cost of all procurement funding to include aircraft flyaway costs, support equipment, training spares, and engineering change orders divided by a minimum of 100 aircraft. Over the next three decades, the program is expected to cost United States taxpayers $203 billion. So, why is the production of this bomber critical for the U.S. Air Force? For more than 70 years, the ability to execute large-scale long-range strikes in all threat environments has been a definite military advantage for the United States. Long-range bombers give theater commanders the ability to attack enemy objectives that other American and coalition forces are unable to reach. However, a smaller bomber force that is unable to keep up with the rising demand for worldwide precision strikes, particularly in the contested locations we might expect in possible peer confrontations, has significantly reduced this edge today. When it is deployed by the Air Force later this decade, the B-21 Raider will be the most sophisticated stealth bomber in existence. The difficulty for Air Force officials will be to get funding for the B-21 program so that it can quickly acquire the inventory it needs to satisfy operational objectives. The B-2, at 22, and F-35A were all subject to cuts, delays, and outright cancellations over the past three decades, thus the Air Force cannot afford to make the same mistakes. To fulfill the criteria of the 2022 National Defense Strategy, or NDS, which include the ability to simultaneously fight Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific, credibly deter an opportunistic aggressor in a second theater, and yet deter nuclear assaults on the United States. In comparison to now, the United States will require a much larger bomber force. Even a slight delay in attaining this goal could leave the U.S. military hollow and unable to triumph against China. Other combat aircraft cannot match the capabilities offered by B-21s, since they lack those qualities. It looks like the U.S. does not have a plan B if it's not for the B-21. But why can't they fight with the existing bombers? The threats that the United States, its allies and partners are currently facing are very different from a more secure environment that the Department of Defense used to justify reducing the size of its bomber force in the decade following the Cold War. The dissolution of the Department of Defense's long-range strike capabilities and capacity accelerated in the post-9-11 era, as resources surged to fund low-intensity counterterrorism and counterinsurgency operations. China made investments as the U.S. made cuts. The People's Liberation Army Air Force's most advanced weapon systems now approach, and in some instances surpass the U.S. military's capabilities. Further, China has fielded offensive and defensive capabilities expressly designed to keep U.S. and allied forces at arm's length and to suppress U.S. and allied operations for a period of time that is sufficient to allow the success of a fait accompli. The Air Force requires penetrating bombers that can deliver weapons at range in order to confront China and destroy a Chinese fait accompli in Taiwan. This will allow theater commanders to achieve a wide spectrum of effects against the most challenging target sets. So how is the B-21 better than its predecessor, B-2, a spirit? The B-2A's original flying wing shape is being refined for the B-21 as a whole. The B-21's leading edge is shaped differently from the B-2A's sawtooth trailing edge. The original stealth bomber, arguably, should have had a cleaner, simpler trailing edge. But in the 1980s, a last-minute need by the Air Force that the spirit be able to fly at low altitudes led to an expensive design revision. The aircraft is therefore probably prepared for flight at medium and high altitudes. The B-21, according to experts, will be around two-thirds the size and weight of the older bomber and smaller than the B-2A. The B-21 depiction shows fewer main landing gear wheels, which reflects this. Simply put, a lighter aeroplane may be supported by fewer landing wheels. It also highlights that, compared to the previous bomber, the drawing shows a shorter fuselage and air inlets farther front. All of this is done to expand the interior space available for the crew's life support, fuel, sensors, and weapons. 
Space is limited, since the B-21 must store all weapons, sensors, fuel, and other supplies within, because it is a stealth aircraft. So do you think that the B-21 bomber is the ultimate solution for the U.S. Air Force to come out on top in aerial warfare? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.